I uh, still haven't done the oil thingy but I decided to just see if the injection pump will prime up and work properly. Seems to be doing so. Can't disconnect the injector and try it though. And the uh, only other ones I have it have an ex external nut, not an internal one. Uh, I suppose you'd have a female thread on the uh, injection rail instead of a male thread. So I can't really test it, I don't think. But it does want to work. That's about it. And that's at full throttle too. It doesn't put out much liquid, but once it starts compressing inside the rail, it comes out at very high pressure. And that little spray is more than enough to fire the engine. Definitely got to bleed these pumps very well. It took me a while to get prime. You know, loosen this banjo off and let any air and everything out of the system. Like, I'm using a bottle of fuel, so I had to squeeze the bottle and force fuel out till it pissed out everywhere. Then quickly tighten the banjo and it works. But if you get one little air bubble inside the banjo, it won't work. Same with the injector. I'm going to take this plug out and we'll screw the line in. Yeah, still nice and clean. The trick's to keep any contaminants out of there. I'm sure I'll have problems with little bits of crap getting into the system, but we'll soon find out. Now, oh, there we go. We've got old Easy Outs. Just drill it a bit oversized and then stuff an Easy Out through it. Easy. Okay, I'm going to use a uh, refrigeration compressor oil pressure gauge on it. So I'm going to use a special adapter that I've got. I wish I could find more of these, that's why I'm doing this little part of the video. If anyone knows if they still make, uh, it's 1 8 British standard pipe thread on this end, and it's standard 1 quarter inch refrigeration or gas fitting on this end. It doesn't have to have the Schrader core in it, but I'm completely out of these. This is my last one and I'm just borrowing it off the Morris engine. Because this was my oil pressure sent oil pressure outlet for the Morris 1100 engine. But yeah. I don't know if they still make these. It was stuff I got off my grandfather and he was playing with the old 1950s, 1960s stuff. So I've still got quite a lot of lot, lot of bits and pieces from him, but none of the, none of these uh 1 8 BSP to quarter inch service port adapters uh, if anyone knows please let me know I can't find them anywhere there we go capillary lines on even after sitting on the shelf for probably six months I still get a little bit of a pop and the smell of R22 when I take the valve cap off it was just trapped between the valve core and the cap itself can't even remember what that came out of um, Oh, that came out of that smashed Lennox, that square American style Lennox unit that I scrapped. That's the overpressure control, high pressure cutout. So yeah, it came off that one. But that's good, I'll bleed that out, bleed the oil through, and uh, connect the gauge off the bits of V4 compressor. I'll probably end up dismantling that one day when I get time, but I'll pinch the uh, oil pressure gauge and reclaim whatever fittings I put onto it. Well, there we go. And just casually turning it by hand, I can get up to about 200 kPa oil pressure. So when it's running, I imagine about 400 kPa, at least. I don't know what kind of oil pressure these are supposed to run, but if I can get 200 kPa just turning it by hand, that's pretty damn good. And I've flushed and cleaned the entire oil system. The whole thing's working nicely now. A bit of spillage from when I was playing with it, but that's all right. I don't even think I'll paint the thing. I'll just leave it as it is. Leave it in its working clothes until somebody can uh, do a full rebuild on it.
and it's starting to get a bit of pressure. Doesn't take much. The oil pump is uh, in pretty good condition now. Little oil scrubber. Okay, well, I'm getting the uh, crank starting mechanism on. I never got a crank handle with it, so let's make one up. I'm taking a piece of steel tubing from a uh, photocopier transfer drum center spindle. I've already bored it out a bit and slotted it so that it fits over the drive pin. Now I'm doing something which I don't recommend doing with your lathe, but you can if you're desperate and that's using a synchronous four jaw chuck to grip the tubing lengthways and I'm going to drill a handle hole all the way through it so I can stick a piece of bar through it and weld it on as the crank handle itself because I've got to find a way to attach that either I cut it off short and just butt weld it or I do something a little more intricate but still interesting and I'm just going to drill right through there with say a 20 millimeter drill and I might take a bit of 20mm bar to work tomorrow and fold up a 20mm solid steel handle make it nice and tough so yeah that's where we're at at the moment I'm gonna drill a big ass hole through this piece of tube hopefully I won't bust me chuck in the process but they're China chucks so they're only like 60 70 dollars each when I where I buy them I've had this one for a while and there's another spare one kicking around somewhere Oh no, this isn't, no, it's a bison chuck. So it's one of the more expensive ones, but still, I ain't gonna hurt it. I wasn't going to go 20 millimeters. I figured 5 8 would be enough. And I've got a bit of 16 millimeter guide rod from another photocopier. And uh, yeah, just bash it on real tight, peen the end over, and you probably don't even have to weld it. I might put a tiny little spot of weld either side, but apart from that, this, ain't, this thing ain't coming apart. Just got to take it to work and heat it up with the oxy and bend, bend it at right angles. But it works quite well though. Hmm. This one's sturdy crank handle. 